Regression to the mean is one of the most important statistical phenomena that exist. It affects everyday life, and many researchers do not know uh, when they're in the middle of regression to the mean. This material is taken from Biostatistics for Biomedical Research. What is a major cause of regression to the mean? It's when subjects are selected because of the values of uh, measurement. And there are many, many examples. Here are a few. Intersections with a few traffic accidents, uh, with frequent traffic accidents, if observed in a later period, will have fewer accidents, even if no changes are made to the intersection. And that's just strictly regression to the mean. The intersections were found at a point in which the accident rate was running atypically high for the intersection. A surgeon with the highest operative mortality, um, say in open heart surgery, will have a significant decrease in mortality in the following year. When New York State published the operative mortality for all of the open heart surgeons uh, a couple of decades ago, uh, the surgeon who was rated as having the highest operative mortality one year and saw a great improvement uh, the next year was asked by a reporter, what do you tell the next surgeon who is rated very poorly in the operative mortality rankings? And the surgeon's answer was uh, to tell the, the other surgeon just to wait. Things will get better. Uh, sometimes we screen patients on uh, having a high or low range on a measurement. And suppose you screen uh, patients for high cholesterol to qualify for a clinical trial. And then once they qualify, you uh, measure the cholesterol again and you find it's significantly lower. That's because the patients who progress through the screening criteria, uh, some of them had their cholesterol mismeasured high uh, and made, that made them qualify for the trial. Of course, you can have mismeasurements low also. So observations from a randomly chosen subject uh, give an unbiased picture uh, for that subject, but when the subjects are selected because they're running high or low, um, or and they're selected because the measurements are atypical for themselves, for example, you can be selected because of measurement error, then you have regression to the mean, and future measurements will regress because measurement errors are random and they will ultimately cancel out. Uh, now, there is an, uh, an example that's so uh, stunning um, that we're going to turn to now. Uh, this was an abstract that was accepted uh, by the American Heart Association. Um, and the researchers did not know that the main phenomenon they were witnessing was actually regression to the mean. And uh, as a side comment, it's very disappointing that uh, hospital quality outcome research uh, really doesn't have the research methodologic standards in place that we need it to. And um, many people doing hospital-based uh, research are n not actually versed in health services research. Um, so in this example, patients qualified uh, because they had a high uh, uh, history of admissions to the hospital. Um, so you can see that the patients were identified uh, based on their readmission history, and these patients had um, a large number of previous admissions to the hospital in the prior period. The results um, are shown in the table. Uh, what they did was implement a, a plan of counseling and working with patients uh, to reduce the chance of readmission, and they claimed that their uh, intervention reduced um, admissions by 43% and reduced emergency department visits by a whopping 70%. Uh, now, that is really mostly regression to the mean uh, because of the biased selection of patients. And it's also telling uh, in this kind of research that when there's no control group, um, the study is destined to not provide uh, much useful information. Uh, so 
looking at pre-post results within one patient is very weak evidence, even if regression to the mean were not in play. Um, but here we have massive regression to the mean, and the irony is the the uh, the conclusion of a big treatment effect would have been made if if the intervention had been to give patients weather reports. Uh, you would have seen very similar reductions. Um, so there's a classic paper on this by Erfurn and Morris uh, that discusses regression to the mean and also discusses shrinkage. And shrinkage is a way to uh, discount some of the data so that the estimates you derive are not going to regress to the mean uh, very much. And so their example was baseball batting averages. And the way that they selected the baseball players to uh, enter into the analysis is that these are uh, players that had exactly 45 at-bats at a certain point in the baseball season. Um, and so let's, let's move to the, um, the graph of the, the raw data and the uh, estimates made from it. Um, and so this is uh, a spectrum of players. You see the great one, Roberto Clemente, who at that point in early in the season was batting uh, 400, so getting um, uh, two hits in every five times at bat. And another great player, Frank Robinson, and another great player, Frank Howard, they were all batting very high. And then you had players batting very low. Max Alphys was batting just above 0.15. Um, and if you look at what happened the rest of the season, that's really what we're trying to estimate. That's the gold standard. That's the so-called truth. And you can see that the kind of variation that you have in the early part of the season is wild variation that's not real. That's just sampling variation because of having only 45 at-bats to enter into the estimate of the proportion of at-bats in which the player got a hit. This variation is the realistic variation um, across batters. And if you had pooled multiple years, you would see it even more stable than that. So a player who starts off very low, who's selected because he was low, he's going to regress towards the grand mean, which is in here. Um, and you can see that his ultimate batting average wasn't as low as what we thought. Uh, here's one that actually crossed over. Uh, someone who starts off very high, uh, they end up not as high as they were. And you can see that especially for Robinson, uh, this is just regression to the mean. Uh, now this analysis uh, of discounting the observed proportions to give better estimates, this is um, not informed by any characteristics of the players or their previous success. So if we were to incorporate in a Bayesian analysis some prior information, we would incorporate the fact that Robert, Roberto Clemente was the great one. And this estimate of batting average for him wasn't so far off the mark because of his tremendous abilities and past success. Now these are shrunken estimates, so this is when you apply active shrinkage discounting um, or also called penalization to the estimates. So the method of the um, James Stein estimator, it takes the observed proportions and shrinks them in a weighted average towards the grand mean. And now you see that these are estimates of the future performance of each batter. These estimates have too little variation uh, because we can't really trust the data as they stand with a sample size 45 per batter. Uh, so this has too little variation. We would like to have estimates that have this variation, but we don't have enough information in the sample to be able to do that. And so we're going to underfit the estimates. But you see that the estimates here are closer to the truth uh, than, than these are closer to the truth. So even with a lot of discounting, we can get better estimates. Um, by using regression to the mean. Um, so the um, regression to the mean for the apparently very hot and very cold hitters is, um, is a really big effect and statistical methods can be used 
to uh, account for that. 